Hello, Chaperson. Hello, Chair. Tomorrow. Okay, yeah, um, I end the debate. Yeah, okay. Hello, hello, um, uh, yes, yes, Chairperson. Um, Chair, just a second, I just want to check the members who have joined us. I see the news, I see Detroit. Um, Kiva, I said he must go and check with the speaker. But I wonder. No, no, no. In, in terms of oh, in terms of Monday, Chairperson, I'm sorry I should have updated um, with, uh, about that first. We have um, seven now, except oh. Christian and Lipobo. So we sorted chair. Uh, okay, it's fine. Uh, but I, I wanted to. Okay, in fact, Chairperson, you can start your meeting. I will like whilst you are starting a meeting, I will scroll down and check which members are here, uh, and then um, make make follow up with those that have not joined us yet. But I'm sure by the time we start to, uh, with the negotiating mandates, all members will be present. Is there still a co-host? Yes, Chairperson, she's a co-host. You may start your meeting now, Chair. Okay. While you do that, can okay. I start this, uh, uh, reflect? To the agenda and somebody call um i've tried to call the other members to check where they are because when we adopt the report we must have a quorum yes sir um, i think um, is also on the platform i i heard him talking earlier uh, i tried to call mama Rahani. i don't know where it is uh, isn't that too on the not, not yet chairperson? Uh chairperson, it's Yunus. In Jadu will be here. We had a, when you rang, we had a subcommittee oh. meeting of the staff on the tax bills. He was at the meeting. We finished about a minute, two minutes ago. He knows about the meeting, he'll be joining us right now. So he'll certainly be here. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Maneng. Is Mr. Maneng a member of parliament from which uh, I'm the, the chairperson of in Northern Cape. Expand, no, no, up. North Cap. North Cap. Yeah. I know that. North Cap is yeah. in Bavaria. You let this yellow <laughs> on smooth prat. Prat, <laughs> North Cap on smooth prat. There is ease but no rack as me. Thank you, Chair. I know we'll talk. <laughs> Chairperson, I hope Hello. that Fani is impressed with your Afrikaans. I certainly am coming from KZN. <laughs> Impressive. <laughs> and well, now you must be able to pay to speak this is Yeah, I'm very well aware of that. But I don't know what I don't I thought you was So, I can't like it's a why up like it's a Zulu. It's just a Zulu. I have no sympathy for myself as I repeat. Why do we keep raising the same issue, right? I have no sympathy for myself. There's no excuse. Not for somebody who's been around. You have started it. You are the one. What do you want me to do? Kill myself. Well, you must plan. That's a possibility. Yeah. No, no, that I agree. Okay. Yeah. That's not a dispute. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then, uh, Mr. Mazamban, he, he knew Sisuzul, and I told him to teach you. He couldn't. Now he's no, there. no, that's not the issue. No, that's not the issue. <laughs> I've had many opportunities. I haven't used them. Frankly, I bought. Look, man, why are we getting to the same discussion we had? And why don't you raise it at the beginning of every meeting? Then I will remind you what I said before, right? So thank you very much. Uh, you can raise it tomorrow and, and also next week, Wednesday and Thursday. Please raise it. No problem. I'll say ditto. I'll, so my answer to you I'll, is ditto. I will raise it at the, in the house tomorrow. Don't worry. You don't need to remind Feel free me. to do so. I'll stand up on a point of order and say she's raised this 30, <laughs> 40 times right now. 
she doesn't speak any Khoisan languages. I should ask her that. Not that it makes I do. me. Uh, I, do. Uh, I do. Oh, really? That's, that's Which one, one do you speak? Which one? You, you want oh, to understand Which me. one do you speak? I can recognize the sound. It's quite sort of ah. sophisticated and very uh, interesting to hear. Uh, Mr. Njadu, welcome. How are you? We have to start now, members. I think we have enough members. Others yes. will join Good us on the day. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you? Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chair. I'm good. Thank you. Uh, honorable members, um, a very good afternoon to you all. And thank you for availing yourself. Uh, let me welcome everybody. Uh, welcome the support team, the support staff, the members of the of the media houses, different ho uh, media houses, and everybody on the platform, and the, sorry about that, and the people who will be watching, uh, um, I am reliably informed by communications in, in parliament that uh, this will be broadcasted. So we need to treat it as such. Um, honorable members, I also want to welcome Treasure, National Treasury team. I'm told it's a team that are here and other stakeholders uh, who are here, you are most welcome. Today, uh, as I indicated uh, yesterday, honorable members, we are going to, this meeting is scheduled to consider the, to, uh, to the adoption of the final mandate and the report of the committee on the division of revenue second amendment bill B24 of 2020. And may I once more uh, honorable members remind you, I know that uh, uh, some are irritated by these reminders, but it's, in, it's important that I do so, that uh, every member should switch on uh, their camera when they speak. Uh, this is due to the reason that I've given uh, in the beginning when I started to, to address you. And whoever is not on the platform speaking, please mute your mic because we might hear things that we are not supposed to, to hear members. Keep your microphones uh, muted. Um, we are now used to uh, raise your hand icon and we know some are still struggling. Uh, their gadgets don't have uh, such uh, uh, icon. I know those and will have an understanding of those. I think it's not uh, many of you who have uh, that uh, problem. And I met another matter, honorable members, that I would like to confirm is that um, as promised by um, uh, Ms. Wendy yesterday afternoon, the National Treasury team uh, this morning submitted their written responses to issues raised by provinces. I think you have all uh, members received uh, those, uh, I mean, that report. Then I'm going to request you members to raise issues. I think there are issues that you have raised uh, and by so doing, I'm not saying that you must uh, reinvent the wheel and restart the engagements. Uh, as per the issues raised by the provinces, but uh, raise the issues as per the responses of the of the uh, of, of 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 treasury team. That will help us to enrich the the report. Oh, one thing I nearly made a, made a mistake by forgetting to acknowledge our important role players here who have sent us to be here in the NSOP. Uh, members uh, from the provinces, you are most welcome. My apologies for not recognizing you uh, in the beginning of the meeting. Uh, do we have apologies, uh, Secretariat? 
from your side. Thank you, Chairperson, and good afternoon, uh, honorable members. No, Chairperson, I haven't received any apologies, Chair. Okay, not for me as well. Um, can, uh, can you reflect the, or is it a team treasury that is going to reflect on the, reflect the, the report and speak to it? Team Treasury. Uh, uh, thank you, Chief Person. Uh, what would maybe be useful is that we did submit the report this morning, um, as we promised yesterday, and you indicated. Uh, maybe it will be useful if there's anything in the report um, that this is unclear or where further information is needed that we can respond to that. Um, because what we try to do is um, we took all the recommendations and uh, erased, and we responded to each of them. And what we tried to do yesterday are taking the main things that's coming out uh, generally from all the provinces, and we highlighted that to the committee. Um, so if there's anything for further clarification, we will be more than willing to assist, and it will be me and my team that can do that. Um, so can we proceed like that? You're ready. I think that will be progressive members members that uh, want to raise issues on the responses from treasury can you please raise your hand i see honorable rider uh, rider's hand is up who else for now is honorable rider honorable rider can you raise what you have identified on the report thank you very much chairperson um yeah well treasury well done on your on your responses, and and I do note that you were given a very short time to do that in, uh, as we all have been given a very short time to process this bill in, um, and I think it's at the behest of, of Treasury and the Minister, so so don't expect too much sympathy from us uh, on that count, um, Chairperson. But the point that I want to raise is that these are indeed exactly what 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 what. We've been told these are responses. They're not really answers. So it's an old political trick. When you get asked a question that you're uncomfortable with, you respond, but you don't answer the question. So you talk around it and you and and and, and you kind of you know throw in a few good good words that that, that that tie to the original question, but you don't actually answer the question. So you know, without belaboring the point and going through it line by line. Um, let, let, let's take the first page, which dealt with the Eastern Capes uh, uh, questions. And the first one relates to the equitable share formula. And, and it says there, you know, province would appreciate if regional uh, nature of provinces is taken into and, and that they want the equitable share formula to, to, to be reevaluated. So the response from Treasury goes a long way around saying, yes, we're busy with that. and. Uh, we, your guys are involved, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What Treasury fails to acknowledge is the fact that, you know, two years ago the FFC highlighted this matter in their submission. Uh, we've been speaking about it for as long as I've been involved, and in discussions with my colleagues for years before, that the equitable share formula doesn't seem to be doing its job. The response that Treasury has given doesn't give us any degree of comfort. It waffles on and tells us that, yeah, you know, we'll do that. It's kind of a, you know, yeah, here's something to keep you busy. Um, don't give us too much pressure. So let's look at the next one. It says that um, um, the Treasury has always promised to engage with the FFC and respond on the matter. This is referring to infrastructure backlogs. And Treasury then responds and says engagement with the FFC are ongoing and most of the grants in the system of formulas driven and responded to in the backlogs. But the FFC is on record in front of this committee to say that Treasury's negotiation engagements with them, sorry, Treasury's engagements with them are you know largely disingenuous and 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 really you know just just to tick boxes. They don't feel that the, the FFC doesn't feel that they are being taken seriously. And this is not responded to properly in terms of that. We go on to the next one, and it, it raises the concerns around the budget cuts uh, in terms of the wage sector wage bill. 
And, you know, the response there is, well, we know it's your concern. Uh, we can't afford to pay the wage bill. So, you know, we're not going to, we're not going to pay it. And uh, you guys are going to have to deal with it and implement what we say. And then goes on with a ridiculous comment at the end, two, two ridiculous comments, sorry. It would not be appropriate for government to comment on a matter that is actively influenced negotiations currently underway with Labour about options for a settlement which will just go to the PSCBC, which I presume is the Public Service Commission's uh, bargaining council. It would not be appropriate to comment to the decision makers that have to sign off the budget. That's not an acceptable comment in my book. And, and, and I take massive umbrage to the fact that government's not going to comment because they feel that they know better than the people that have to approve this budget. And then it goes on in the, the last sentence says, our contingency includes a settlement with labor and measures to manage the headcount. Don't know what that means, but your contingency fund has already been illegally committed to bailouts. And I'm not sure what other contingency that, that, that you've got there. Chair, I could go on and attack every single paragraph of this report, but really I just feel that, that they are responses, they're not answers, and we still sit with provinces that are feeling like they are, you know, stepchildren further down in the food chain, and they, you know, they, they, they must just pick up the scraps, and they become the voting photo of the ANC when it comes time to approving the Division of Revenue Amendment Bills, and imagine if provinces feel that way, how local government feels, because they really, they're not even stepchildren. They're Chair, you on mute? Sorry, I was muted. Thank you. Honorable Chairperson, I fully agree with what the Honorable Ryder just said. I can take one example of what I think is just, it's, it's no solutions to the problem. When it comes to the drought, it refers all the time in this report that, or in this answers that they gave, what can happen with regards to the drought if disasters are declared? They are still handling this as okay. if there are, is still a drought disaster that has been declared. That is not the case. The drought disaster declaration fell away a few months ago. It is, I, I, I can't understand why Treasury keeps on answering this as if the drought disaster status is still in place. So in actual fact, the answer that they gave to the province is null and void because it can't be implemented. They they give answers as if this drought disaster is still in yeah. place and it is uh -huh. not. I can also carry on, but uh, that is the one point that I just wanted to uh, point out to you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Honorable Ocamp. Any other member who wants to comment on the responses? Or who want to engage on uh, what uh, the members have raised as concerns? I think the criticism from the two members is that uh, uh, what Treasury is giving to us is not answers but uh, responses. And according to my understanding, is that we were expecting responses in terms of what uh, the the provinces have raised as concern uh, in terms of the budget cuts or allocations. So the members are not happy, the two members uh, from the DA are not happy with the, the responses. Um, they feel uh, they were more like uh, compliance uh, than giving uh, direct answers. Honorable uh, Detroit. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Honorable Chair, I want you to know, in the past, has um, National Treasury once, or how many times have they changed the Division of Revenue Bill after receiving feedback from the different provinces? Uh, my feeling is that the National Treasury takes note of the comments and concerns, but then it's business as usual. 
uh, if we can please be provided with with information with regards to changes being made in the past uh, if, if that had if that has happened thank you chair can i seek assistance from those who have been in the nsop and in this uh, committee before us that has it ever happened if i understood you well uh, honorable to do it has it ever happened that uh, national treasury um, uh, has it ever changed the division of revenue or the adjusted uh, revenue as per the inputs from the provinces? What impact had uh, the provinces have on the on the, on the on the on the division of revenue? Has it happened in the history of? Uh, of, of parliament, has it ever happened? Can I, uh, our, our support team, can you help us? Who's that? Support staff, can you help us with this? Honorable Okam, can you lower your hand? And uh, uh, Lomo, okay. Uh, Yes. Advocate, do you no, want to uh, respond? No, no one else is responding. I can't remember that. Okay. Well, I can't recall that a provincial input okay. has led to a, a change in the division of revenue. We've changed the division of revenue, but that's because of, of, of technical errors and corrections and, and having to change various things after a new government, but not, a, not from a provincial input. No, no. Uh, usually that happens through the FFC, and, and but it's a long process and Treasury must answer. I'm just trying to help with that. Thanks. Okay, uh, um, Mr. Hi, thanks, Chair. Uh, uh, greetings, honorable members and chairperson. Uh, from my side, I can only speak um, on behalf of the NA experience because my history has been with the NA appropriations where I've dealt with the DORA um, um, input um, with Treasury. So a number of, of, of things, um, at the time. Um, I can highlight they had been changed uh, as, as a result of the recommendations of the NA committee. Um, I'm not sure about the provincial input because that's a separate process which uh, hinges into NCOP. But as far as the NA committee that I've been part of for the past 12 years, I know for the fact that there are conditional grants that the court, that committee, then committee, uh, made the recommendations of a uh, national treasurer res responded positively on those constitutional grants, and some will also respond negatively, and also give reasons, very cogent reasons as to why those recommendations are not being taken into, into account. But also, Chair, remember that in the next budget, which a budget together with a budget review document, where the responses uh, will also be provided on the recommendations that you are making today, as far as the DORA is concerned. So whatever recommendations that members are making today uh, uh, through this report, those recommendations, if they are not taken into account by Treasury, the minister will have to respond and, uh, and explain as to why are they not being implemented. But if they are being implemented also, you will also see some of those changes in the revenue, revenue bill or in the appropriations bill depending whichever bill that affects. But as far as the NA is concerned, I can witness some of the couple of, of changes that have been put in the past. Thanks, Chair. But of Thank course, Chair, the, those were the different... Also, another thing, Chair, that you must also remember is that um, those were also different executives um, um, uh, that were, were, were a treasure at the time. So, and also different committees. And, and, and. Thanks, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Jomo. Mr. Nodata, I think you have uh, an experience in as far as uh, NCOP is concerned. Don't we have Advocate Dao on the, on the platform? Is Ad Advocate Dao not here? He is here, Shepazim. Advocate Dao, can you help? Uh, you can also come in, uh, not that, that we want to use as much 
uh, information as possible. Th thank you, Chairperson. Uh, one incident I can remember, Chairperson, it is the issue of the Molodo Road. I believe in one year, the Bumalanga province did make a submission with regard to that, and it was factored in and it received attention. And I can also uh, add on what Mr. Lomwes indicated. Some of the grants, there was a time, it's just that right now, we, we don't have time to be specific where is the issue of whether the grants should be run by the national department or by the province. In some cases, uh, provinces did not show capacity to implement grants and those grants had to be run by the national department. And in some cases, provinces which showed capacity, the provinces indicated that they have capacity and the national treasury allowed those grants to be uh, uh, run by the, the, the provinces. Those are the, the few examples I can remember of, but not to say there was an <clears throat> amended uh, division of revenue bill. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, honorable member. Uh, Chair. And colleagues, uh, Lomo? Yeah, the other example, Chair, that I can add into what Advocate is saying, um, I remember in the NA, uh, we, we had a situation where certain conditional grant will come to an end after three years, after a three period. And therefore, as a committee uh, support staff, we'll embark on an exercise where we review whether those specific grants have actually uh, managed to achieve their intended objectives uh, before they are terminated at the end of a three-year period. Because Treasury will be pushing and insisting that we are terminating this grant because it has actually a, a completed three-year period. And therefore, the committee, based on our exercise and our recommendations, will then say, no, Eastern Treasury, we cannot terminate that particular grant because it has not um, um, achieved its objectives. This is the evidence or this is the research that has been done to show that. So uh, there's a quite a number of, 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 of issues and, and examples and changes that parliament has actually made, be insignificant or small as they are, but they do really make an impact. Thank you very much. Jefferson. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Domo. Uh, members, I see other members' mics are, are on. I don't know if it's because they want to speak or they forgot to. Uh, I see the hand of uh, Honorable Detroit. Thanks for the advices. And then uh, Honorable Karim, after Detroit. Honorable Detroit, you can Thank speak. you, Honorable Chair. Honorable Chair, I believe um, Honorable Karim's hand was up before mine. I think we should give him an opportunity, then I'll come in afterwards. No, uh, I, I didn't speak. Obviously it's fine. No, fine. It's fine, you can speak. I'll speak after him. Anyway, it helped me to demolish his, demolish his argument also. It, so it I don't speaking. think he will <laughs> mind, uh, Honorable Tito. It's, I don't think he will mind. Honorable uh, Chair, um, yes, I mean, it's obvious that in the National Assembly, changes are made, but it just feels as if the correspondence between National Treasury, the NCOP, and the provincial legislatures of such a sort that, um, yes, National Treasury takes note, but there's no real changes being made on the requests of the different provinces. That is, that is the feeling that I, that I get from this and the assumption that's been taken for the feedback that has been provided up to now. So I think this is something that must be looked into because thousands of rands are being spent with regards to public participation, et cetera. And um, the correspondence between the provinces, the NCOP and National Treasury. And um, the question then stands uh, to what extent uh, is, is, is the value of the input that is given from the provinces and the NCOP towards National Treasury? And um, are they really looking into the matters that are of concern to the provinces? 
Thank you, Honorable Detroit. Honorable Karim? Yeah, firstly, I was teasing Fanny, obviously, that it's barely he speaks before me that I can uh, sort of like sort him out. Uh, and he took it in a good humor uh, 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 in which it should be treated. So before you attack me now, Chairperson, I should point out uh, I'm wearing a Cuban shirt. So, you know, that's allowed in terms of the norms as formal wear. And it's what I would have worn in summer as I do for, I think, since 1994. Uh, and I also remind you that the chairperson of the house, no less, Mr. Mosond, doesn't wear a tie on all occasions. So having said that, avoid being attacked. And once again, I repeat to my eternal shame, I do not speak fluent Isizul, uh, let alone Shibenda and Songa and so on. So uh, let's start with this. The first thing, chairperson, my own view for what it's worth is that, um, Look, the general point being made about what is the value of the NCOP in respect of this process, I think chairperson is a legitimate one. It's a fair one. And it should affect the ANC even more than other parties because we are a majority. And uh, basically, <clears throat> I don't think it's a matter we can resolve here. I think it's something we need to put in our report. I think it's also something the major majority political party needs to address as well. It's not just about the division of revenue, it's also about the tax bills that are preoccupying us. I've just come from one hour meeting with the research team and Comrade Njadu on the tax bills and the issues it's posed for us, which is unprecedented. Uh, receiving so many submissions on a 75 bill. And, you know, we, where do we go, given that Parliament was surprised by the ninth? But I will report back on those things uh, tomorrow evening. Secondly, um, you know, I think we should just note the concerns. And then we should address it in some other forum. Uh, first of, uh, well, not first, uh, both in the structures of the majority party and in this committee. And then beyond this committee, in the NCOP, we're having a workshop. I think in January next year or February, when we come back, I think it should be put on the agenda that Jefferson. Uh, insofar as people are making the general point that national tragedies responses uh, are not good, not adequate, seem nominal, I think that's a fair thing to say. So, you know, I have greatest respect for the tragedy team here. And uh, they work very hard. But, you know, their answers, I think in general, are not great. And they probably give the same answers before. But I also think Dennis in particular is out of line, really. That's my view. He will not agree, Chairperson, you may not agree. I think he's getting heated up unduly, really. So let's start with the two issues I'll deal with, because there's too many issues they've raised. And I could reply for days and days. And we're not going to get anywhere because... It's the same things they will say. It's the same things I've said. I've heard myself say these things so many times since May last year. So I'll be very brief. On the first issue about the, fisc uh, the, the, the equitable share, I don't know what's expected. But you see, the other issue before I go to that committee chair, it depends whether a bill is 75 and 76. In the case of a 75 bill, no matter what the provinces say, <coughs> the truth is the constitution. <laughs> <laughs> and the rules of Parliament provide a different treatment by the NCOP in the province of a section 76 bill and a 75 bill. So we can't just have a blanket view on this matter. But then come to the two issues Dennis raises that I think are, are questionable. Firstly, this thing of the equitable share, it was first raised in 1999 by our committee. It has been raised almost every year, year and a half, both in Parliament, the National Assembly in this case, and of course the NCOP. And in fact, in other forums, SELGA and the endless meetings I've had with uh, Samu and Imatu and SELGA. I also played the role as a deputy minister for four years. That was the big concern of the minister and myself. I was delegated to work on Klaus Lanene on the review. Now, the review has to be done, correct. But we can't be one-sided, Chairperson. Local government can justify getting more money if it spends the money that it has raised in its own revenue, raising that revenue in the first instance, where possible, from teachers, members of parliament, councillors, not talking of the unemployed, 
I'm not talking of the marginalized. I'm talking about those who can't afford to pay. They must do more to ensure that they more productively use the money that they've raised, raise more that they can, spend it more effectively and productively, and in fact, do so with the conditional grants and the equitable share. There's a litany of examples that the NCOP has been raising since 1996 about that not happening at local government. So it works both ways. If they did use more effect, make more effective use of the limited resources they have, they'll have a stronger case for more in terms of the equitable share. But secondly, why it is very important, Comrade Chair, we picked it up in our visits to the local government municipalities three weeks ago. It was picked up at the local government conference I went to now, the people who shaped the model. It was a wonderful conference. I think it's going to be on, uh, uh, on some Selga website. It's really a fantastic conference, you know, that I participated in this morning. The same issue arose there. And these are technical experts, you know, and, and they're raising the same issue about the equitable share. And uh, my MEC in my province said, it's a structural problem when we were there, right? So what I'm saying in short is, it's a big issue. You can't expect national treasury now to reply. I mean, it's such a big issue. But who has failed more than national treasuries? Us, members of parliament, us in the Finance and Appropriations Committee. We are not taking a strategic and tactically sound approach. Now, you can't expect the team here to give an answer to that question. It's a bigger issue. So in short, what I'm saying, Comrade Chair, you know what? We have to deal with the matter. Okay, uh, and, and uh, keep it as a separate discussion. Then on the issue of, of, of um, you know, the public sector wage bargaining. I mean, we've covered this already in the fiscal framework, right? We're not saying anything new. It's a perfectly reasonable thing for government to say, Comrade Chair. I refuse to find any value in what Dennis is saying. There's nothing there. How can they come out now and say, government, you can know your sympathies and mine and others are with the unions, obviously, right? Given our background. But you know what? What is government supposed to do to say, okay, we've got a plan B. If you have a plan B, the bargaining council becomes irrelevant. The balance of forces changes. It actually, the, what happens is the unions will say, but they have a plan B. They can't say they haven't got money, right? On the other hand, it's wrong for the unions to be high bound because the fiscal framework and the appropriation stuff defines how much of money before the bargaining takes place, government has. So both ways is a problem. They have to review this whole bargaining process, Comrade Chair. There's a problem for the unions, a legitimate problem. There's a problem for government, a legitimate problem. But government can only express its own point of view. How can labor express the point of view of the employer, Comrade Chair? You know that more than me. How can the employer express the point of view of labor? Yet these are allies, especially in Yahoo, right? And, and, and ANC. And... So what I'm saying is a perfectly reasonable answer. What are they supposed to say? Secondly, we've covered the same issue in the National Assembly. We said, the reason I'm repeating this is because there are MPLs here. Chairs of committees, maybe. Otherwise, I wouldn't, but I'll just say refer to what we've said already in the fiscal framework. Now, look, Comrade Chair, we're saying it's correct that actually let the court decide. If that fails, obviously you go to bargaining first. If that fails, then you have to consider what to do. There are various options. Apart from the statutory bodies, there's the alliance structures and so on. It's quite complicated. Because an SACP has got a specific position on it that I'm not yet to share, right? So there's an alliance structure, nothing hidden, it's in the paper, it's in the city press. Everything that's said in our structures is there out there in the papers. So, you know, there's nothing to hide. The alliance structure will meet too. So at this stage, it's unfair to expect a mechanical, crude answer. Where's your plan B? Furthermore, Comrade Chair, I, this is the area where I'm slightly hazy. If in fact the money has to be found, is it the provinces, I think that's correct, because Dennis seems to think that, who have to pay from their bill, or since the national bargaining process, is the national fiscus meant to assist the provinces to pay for any increases that might happen? It's not the end of the world. What will happen is there'll be an open, transparent process. There will be a bill. And Dennis can then rave and rant about it. That's fine. That's his right. But as a province, 
It's the provincial mandate that counts. So I don't think we should keep repeating this. I don't think it's fair to expect government to say, here's a plan B. And how can the government anticipate the outcome of all these both statutory and non-statutory uh, uh, processes, Comrade Chair? But the other points they make in general, I agree with the general points. They must be discussed. Thank you. Thank you very much. I will not reply. Uh, to uh, reply, uh, it's his right to reply. I think I've covered the ground. There's nothing further I can say. So if Dennis wants to reply, I don't want to reply to you because it's fine. It's his right. So members, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, going to allow the, 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 the meeting to, lead, to lose its direction. We have uh, had concerns and sought uh, assistance from those who have an experience uh, legally and the, the work experience from the previous years. We have entertained the issues that uh, the concerns that member, members have, have raised. And I found this matter when I started, I said, let us not reinvent the wheel. Because yesterday we have given ourselves to raise issues as, we, as, as they were raised in the provinces. I can only understand from the point of view of Honorable Okam, who said he's not even sure that these concerns were discussed in the meeting and whatever, and his matter has been uh, addressed as I committed to address it. Honorable members, let us not uh, try to create dialogue and uh, do what is expected of us today to consolidate uh, mandates. If the provinces have had an opportunity to have committee meetings and treasury in their presence, made recommendations based on the consent and responses that they received from treasury, let's intervene those and, 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 and do our report. I see other members have uh, used the chat uh, icon uh, to say we must wait for their, their debate for tomorrow. And some of the issues, they are meant for the debate for tomorrow when we are debating. But I just wanted to give uh, ourselves as, an, as, a, as a committee to to tap from those who have and an, an, uh, who have uh, experience in terms of their work and 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 and, and the, 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 our fundies the legal fundies. So, honourable members, the issue of the wage bill, I it's not it's it's, it's, a, it's neither here nor there. It's, it's a non-starter. I don't see as why. Uh, why we, we even waste time to talk about the wage bill? Because there are other structures. We have so much that we have on our shoulders. There are structures that are mandated to deal with those issues. And if government was adamant to do whatever decides to do, even after engaging with those affected uh, structures, and it, it it, it, it comes up with a, another outcome. The government will see, will have to see how to deal with, with that. But we are not mandated to take issues of, uh, of negotiations from the, the, the National Bargaining uh, Council. We should not do that. I, I beg of you, honorable members. I see uh, honorable, um, Ryder insists that he wants to speak, and after this, we need to move forward. Uh, Honorable Ryder, and before you speak, uh, I have noted you. Before you speak, Honorable Ryder, you know this matter. We must we must uh, compare it with uh, the question answer session in in the in the house. If you ask a, an executive member or the president a question, he or she going to uh, answer, give you an answer in terms of how he or she responds or the information that he or she, she has. But you might not be happy with the answer because you have an expectation of a certain answer that it needs to be in a, in, in a, in a, in a, in a certain manner. So 
it's unfortunately like that. But then we are noting these things and we also are noting things that you have uh, given, you have written on the, on the chat that you raise them, but we will give enough, uh, we have given us ourselves enough opportunity to engage on the matters in the provinces, in the committee yesterday, even today as per the responses. Uh, Honorable Ryder. Okay, thank you. I will be very brief and I'm not going to turn my video on because I believe that my connection is unstable. Chair, I think that, that uh, Mr. Karim and myself agree on more than we disagree on. Um, and uh, uh, I just want to make the point quite strongly, though, that, that matters that are dealt with at, in the fiscal framework discussions should not be confused with the matters that we're talking about today. It's coming at it from a different angle entirely, specifically because today we are dealing with the provincial inputs and we're dealing with the concerns that are raised by province. So our deliberations and discussions that, that took place during the fiscal framework um, are very different. And in fact, the concerns that were raised now are the, uh, relate to the impact on provinces of those decisions in the fiscal framework. And that's exactly why we go through this process where we go today, is to actually interrogate the impact of our decisions on provinces after discussing with the provincial legislatures. So you, I, I really don't think any, any arguments or discussion should be dismissed. I don't want to enter into a dialogue, absolutely. I think that there's lots of space for that. But I do think that, 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 that Eunice and myself agree largely on the fact that, A, these answers are not really adequate and, and, and we, need to get, we need to get to a better process. Uh, and, and, and B, we also need to ensure that going forward, Chair, and this is a request to you, we need to make sure that there's adequate time given to the processing of these bills. Honestly, we've rushed the last two processes and, and we understand the reasons for that, but we mustn't find ourselves in a situation where every single time we're processing a budget, um, it's, it's just before a, 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 a recess, just before parliament rises, or it's shoved in between other things and we're not given enough time to do the process. I really think it was, it, it was quite unfair to give the provincial structures a day to go from negotiating mandate to final mandate. I think that timeline was, was really harsh and, and I don't believe we should be rushing this process. Let's give ourselves enough time and give Treasury enough time to adequately assess the responses from, Treasury, from, from, from the provinces and see if changes can be made. Because I also don't believe they had the opportunity to, to really interrogate and see what could be changed at this stage. So, yes, Chair, I think that this discussion is, or this is the opening of a discussion, and it's a discussion, as, as, as Mr. Karim said, for a different day. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Ryder. Um, Honorable members, thank you for your, 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 your input. And uh, I think we, we need to take uh, this discussion in that spirit to say, uh, more especially on the issue that uh, Honorable Ryder is, is raising and uh, other members on the issue of, 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 of time frame. It's unfortunate this is the second amendment this year. There's nothing we can do. And I think it's an unfortunate situation that uh, uh, Treasury found itself in and they had no choice. The other matter that we need to, to raise, which we have raised before in our threat plan last year when we came in, uh, we have emphasized also on our provincial week and the, the engagements of the workshops that we have to say uh, provinces need to be given. And it's, it's, it's a resolution that uh, NCOP has taken that uh, provinces need to be given enough time to deal with mandates, to deal with issues that need to, 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 to make an impact on the decisions that are taken at this level of parliament. I think we all agree that on, on that. We have taken a decision on that. Nobody is disagreeing with, 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 with this uh, 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 important uh, decision. It's very important. I'm going to request uh, Tim for, uh, Treasury, if you want to comment, please don't take much. Tim Treasury. Uh, 
thank you. We won't take too much time um, because I think that the bank has um, dealt with a lot of issues. But just to uh, share the community that we're really not trying to, to not respond. For example, on Thank okay. you, Dan. So, um, with, with regard to um, uh, the issues raised, I just want to give the committee the assurance that we take all the recommendations coming out of the provincial legislature very seriously, and um, we will strive um, to, to respond better going forward as well, um, as highlighted by the committee. Um, I think the other issues have all been addressed in, in the subsequent discussions. Thank you. And also, I think we, we, we need to look into the issue of planning so that uh, our, uh, your planning does not uh, inconvenience our planning. Uh, we find ourselves in the situation that we have because uh, NA just finalized this process last week Friday and we had to start on Monday. So th there was no much time. So Going, we understand the circumstances that uh, has uh, uh, required us to be here. But going forward, we're saying we need to do more planning unless we have uh, unforeseen circumstances like this. Uh, Note to those uh, concerns from the members. Uh, honorable members, thank you for, for, for that. Can we now go to the final mandates from the provinces? I will start with the, I will start with the, I'll go alphabetically, honorable members. This is the final mandate on the Division of Revenue Second Amendment Bill, the B24 of 2020. Eastern Cape, are you ready? The final mandate? Eastern Cape, honorable Mkiva, he was complaining about the uh, network. If possible, Lubabalo uh, or Lubabalo or, or, or Estelle, can you call him and put him on the on the speaker so that we can hear him presenting? Because I think he has a, a, a poor network. Can you go to Free State? Uh, Honorable Ntatem Letani, I was waiting. I've been waiting for your that thing that we spoke about, but I'm still waiting. I need it uh, even after you have presented. Thank you, Chair. Check your WhatsApp. I did send. Okay. Uh, but for record, for the record purpose, this is uh, what has been sent to me by the Free State Province. It reads as follows, uh, dear Honorable Chair to abstain from voting and from voting NCOP. The above matter hereby refers. Kindly take notice that the free state abstains from voting on the division of revenue, revenue second amendment bill B24 stroke 2020, and will not be able to vote due to NCOP related challenges which set a date for provincial briefing and public hearings for Mondays, 23 November, 2020, when the provincial committee committee meeting could not take as Mondays as, uh, sorry, uh, can I, yeah, let me just start here. Uh, related challenges, which set a date for provincial briefing as public hearings for Mondays, 23 November, 2020 when the provincial committee meeting could not take as Mondays are set aside for political work. We attach the NCOP section 76 updates for your, for your ease of reference. Kind regards, Honorable N.B. Sifuba M.S. Speaker, Free State Legislature. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Ntatemuletani. Can you go to Houteng? Thank you, Chairperson. Yes, the I have in my possession a signed letter 
It's uh, signed by the Speaker of the Gauteng Province, uh, uh, the Honourable Mekwe. And surprise, surprise, the, the Gauteng Legislature have moderated their uh, position from yesterday um, and are in support with the or in support of the Division of Revenue Amendment Number Two uh, in terms of both its content and principle. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honourable Raida. Uh, Honourable Karim. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Um, basically, the House met this afternoon in case it didn't, and uh, a letter was written by Mr. M. Tembo, the Chairperson of the Committees and Presiding Officer, and the vote is as follows. The, the legislature met today um, and agreed to mandate the KwaZulu-Natal delegation. I don't know what delegation they're talking about. It's just a delegate to the National Council of Provinces to support the Division of Revenue, Second Amendment Bill, and you know the number. And uh, uh, secondly, just to say, I'm not going to make any side remark like surprise, surprise, because I'm dutifully <laughs> representing my province, unlike a certain person whose name I shall not mention, who spoke before me. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Karim. Uh, Honorable Mamarhani Liliet. Thanks, Chairperson. Uh, from Limpopo, I spoke to the Chief Whip yesterday, even the, 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 the MEC for, fine, for, for Treasury and the, the Chairperson. For now, I, there's nothing that I can report. I didn't receive anything from, 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 legis from Limpopo Legislature. Thank you, uh, Honorable uh, Mamarakhani. Uh, the next one is Mpumalanga. The, I have received the letter, Honorable Members, uh, last night. The, it's directed to the Chairperson of uh, National Council of Provinces. And uh, the subject is the Division of Revenue Second Amendment Bill, B24-2020. Uh, the sitting was uh, on the 25th of November, 2020. The mandate is that um, the delegation representing the province of uh, Mpumalanga in the National Council of Provinces is hereby confirmed with a mandate conferred, sorry, uh, with a mandate to vote in favor of the Division of Revenue Second Amendment Bill B24 of 2020 signed by the Speaker of Mpumalanga Provincial Legislature, Honorable B.P. Shiba, on the 25th of November, 2020. Thank you, Honorable Members. Uh, we now step down to uh, Northern Cape. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Honorable Chairperson, the uh, committee of the Northern Cape uh, apparently had their meeting this morning. I received an email this afternoon uh, it is addressed to the Honorable Amos Masondo uh, on the Division of Revenue Second Amendment Bill B24-2020. Uh, and yeah, again, on this instance also, surprise, surprise, the legislature voted in favor of the bill. It is signed by the Honorable Claster, the Speaker of the uh, Provincial Legislature in the Northern Cape. Thank you. Chairperson, point of order, is Willie so terrified, <laughs> so terrified of Dennis? And did they cork us that they're going to say surprise, surprise? Did they spend the whole yes. day planning that? I am not even surprised that you are commenting that. now. That is also I surprise, surprise for me. That's the two. Uh, that is a I think you forgot Karim. That's honorable, it. honorable Chairperson, I just want to say that I'm not surprised that Eunice commented on this. I knew that you would. Honorable Karim. <laughs> Chairperson, I'm a law-abiding citizen. It's true reflection of the government's mandate without any comments. Honorable Old Campus represent as well there. Sure. 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 But, 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 Honorable Chair, yes, I've received the mandate from the Northwest Provincial Legislature. 
Um, the Northwest Provincial Legislature votes in favor of the Division of Revenue Second Amendment Bill B24-2020, and it's signed by the Honorable Isar Tanche. Thank you. See, that's a law-abiding citizen. It's 17 hours. I wonder how you were when you were young. Um, the last part one, was that Honorable <laughs> Uh, thank you, thank you, Honorable Chair, members. The Western Cape uh, Provincial Parliament final mandate uh, to the NCOP Chair, uh, Chairperson N A A N uh, Masondo. The name of the, the bill, Division of uh, of Revenue Second Amendment Bill B 2020 deliberations was on the 25th of November, 2020, vote of the legislature. The Western Cape Provincial uh, Parliament confers on the Western Cape delegation in the NCOP, authority not to support. Signed by the speaker, Honorable M. Nasela. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Msali. Uh, Honorable um, Mr. Notata, were you able to get hold of uh, Honorable uh, Nkiva? In fact, he is he's, he's on the platform. If you may oh, okay. call him again. Okay, Honorable Nkiva, thank you for coming back. You can present your mandate. Honorable Nkiva. Uh, maybe yes, let, 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 let me assist by flighting the final mandate from the Eastern Cape. Uh, maybe yes. you might you might decide to delegate to one of the members to, to read it for you. Let me share my screen share. Okay, can I delegate to Honorable Njadu to do it? Is it visible, Chair? Okay, Chair. Yeah, it's visible. Yes. Honorable Njadu. Uh, uh, okay, Chair. Um, yes, okay. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, the Office of the Speaker, final mandate uh, to the National Council of, uh, Chairperson of the National Council of Provinces, the name of the Bill Division of Revenue, Second Amendment Bill, number of Bill. Bill 24, 20, Bill 24 20, 2020, date of deliberation, 25th of November, 2020, vote of the legislature. The legislature supports the bill, Bill 24, 2020, and mandates the Eastern Cape Premier Delegate to the FOP. Permanent. 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 permanent apology. Permanent Delegate to the, to the NCOP to vote in favor of the, of the, Adoption of the bill, signed by the Speaker, Honorable Helen Souls, uh, MPL. Souls Akas, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Njadu, to come into our rescue. Um, Honorable uh, Nkiva, if you can hear us, please stay on the line, stay on the on the platform, because now we are going to deal with the report the draft report uh, as received. Can, uh, can Secretary reflect the report on the screen, please? Yeah, person on a point of order. Yes, sir. Chair, I'm just trying to establish what the process is with uh, Limpopo not venturing any, any inputs. Uh, do we note uh, them as absent? Do we note them as as, as abstaining? Uh, how, how do we treat that that, that in this uh, circumstance? Uh, honorable honorable uh, Dennis, I have consulted after realizing that it is uh, this problem with the two provinces. At least uh, Free State have uh, responded as an abstainance. 
But with Limpopo, there was no answer uh, that I could get. So they will not be counted in as we vote. I don't know if uh, maybe afterwards there will be uh, anything else. Advocate Tawu, can you advise if I'm correct on my take? Chairperson, thank you. Uh, what need to happen is if the mandate of the committee is not or of the province is not available, it will be noted as such because uh, at, at this stage you don't have the final mandate. So it should be recorded as such. What the committee need to do is to check whether the provinces that are supporting the bill are more than five because it, it needs to have the majority of the provinces supporting the bill then that will guide the decision of the committee okay. on the adoption of the report. Without trying to read the mind of Honorable uh, Ryder, is that tomorrow or after we have adjourned, if uh, Limpopo uh, meets or the, le the legislature have a sitting and decide on the mandate, are we going to count it? Because what we will be presenting is what we have entertained as a committee. If it has not been part of what we have in the committee, then we will not uh, count it in. Is that the understanding, uh, Advocate? Yeah, in, in the House chairperson, provinces can still vote if they have not submitted their final mandate. The, 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 the procedure is when it comes to the House voting, provinces that have not submitted their their their, their their mandate can still support or they can still vote the way they've been Otherwise. mandated. Yes, yeah. For now it is the committee process, but in the house, the provinces will also express themselves my, uh, in my understanding. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Honorable Ryder, are we on the same page? Yeah, I accept it. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, Lubaba, look, can you flag the report, please? Can you move? Oh. Thank you, uh, honorable members. That's the first uh, page one of the, of the mandate. M must must I continue go? to, must I continue to scroll down chair? Please scroll okay, to you. page two. We'll move page by page. Is this page two? Yes, or point two. Yes, it's page two, Chair. Okay. Anything, members, on page two? Page three. On page four, page Page six.
page seven. Page eight. Page nine. Page ten. If I'm faster members, you can stop me. Page 13. Page 14. Page 15. Page 16. Page 17, honorable members. Page 18. Page 19. Page 20. Page 21 and page 22, honorable members. Chairperson, if I may. Yes, sir. Thank you, Chair. Chair, I think that uh, the, report, the report has been extremely well put together. Um, and, and I must commend the team on, 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 on doing that. And I think that uh, there, there was one oversight that they, that they didn't mention how across the one uh, member of the public got with me during uh, our deliberations. Uh, that's on a lighter note, sorry, Chair. But um, Chairperson, the, the, the two recommendations that were made today, I think uh, perhaps should be reflected uh, in our recommendations, indicating that we need to look at the time frames, firstly, and secondly, that we, we, we don't believe that Treasury is giving, giving us, us good enough responses, not necessarily us, and I, I want to make that point quite strongly, not giving the provinces sufficient responses. Um, and then the last point that I want to make, Chair, and it, it could have just me, been me moving through it too quickly, but I didn't see any comments about this recurring issue around the uh, revisiting of the uh, um, equitable share formula. I didn't see the comments about that in the recommendations. It could have been me just working through too quickly through it. So if it can be pointed out if I've missed it. Just those three additions as far as I'm concerned. Thank you, Chair. Chairperson, may okay, I come in? The issue that, uh, okay, Honorable Karim. Yeah, firstly, um, I think we should say something about while the committee welcomes, uh, no, while the committee understands the mm -hmm. delay of the presentation of the MTBPS by a week, excuse me, given the unprecedented circumstances of COVID-19, it has uh, hamstrung uh, the appropriations committee uh, uh, from uh, fulfilling its responsibilities to the 
full extent it could, uh, given the time constraints. Okay, something like that. I mean, between yourselves and Pelelani, you can sort out the actual wording. Secondly, the committee notes that um, the issue of the fiscal review of the fiscal framework has been on the agenda of parliament and government for a good many years, comma, and while there's been some progress, comma, uh, uh, we feel that the matter needs uh, a substantial or wholesale, whatever, find the right word, review, uh, involving not just um, parliament, but Selga and government and civil society actors or something like that. And that uh, this matter be, uh, the chair be mandated to engage with the, uh, you know, National Assembly chairperson appropriate and the Finance Committee chairpersons in this regard and consider a discussion by parliament uh, sometime in the first quarter of next year uh, for us to, to look at this. Uh, we might want to add something about given the uh, 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 given the what what should we say given the uh, uh, deteriorating circumstances of the um, uh, financial and governance circumstances uh, you know occasioned or I don't know what the right word is by COVID nineteen uh, this review is uh, another angle now you know it's, it's it's another impetus or another reason uh, for us to review it. Uh, and thirdly, um, there was another matter, Dennis Ray, that I think we agreed on. Uh, it doesn't come to me immediately, but there were three things that, that, that he said, which are a reasonable, uh, I think, degree of... Oh, yes, uh, about the issue. See, firstly, Comrade Chair, I know Wendy for many, many years. Uh, I've been to her a few times over the phone to ask her to clarify certain technical concepts. I must say, Comrade Chair, and I think you picked this up too, as I hope others have. Wendy is a very hardworking, very helpful member of Treasury, as is the team with her. I've seen the way they manage the uh, discussions, you know, and, and they're really good. So, you know, I, I hope that Wendy doesn't, and our colleagues don't, whoever is a, here, I don't recognize them particularly, but they might be here. I don't see it as personal. There are issues they cannot respond to, as I said. So I, I think that uh, what we should say is, 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 is something to this effect that, uh, uh, that, that you know, that, that uh, uh, the committee feels that, um, the committee appreciates the, 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 the hurried or whatever word it is, circumstances, particularly this year, given what we just said, uh, of the processing of the uh, division of revenue and the added pressures on national treasury to respond swiftly uh, to the provincial concerns. And we should also note the, the province's difficulties, uh, uh, you know, in securing the negotiating and final mandates given the circumstances. So uh, I, I think we should say something like, you know, not like slam them, say, look, we understand, but the answers are not adequate and uh, they are urged to uh, give fuller and more effective responses, something like that. I, I don't know, you and Philadelphia can sort out the actual wording, but that's a broad thrust of uh, our budget. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Jomo, have you captured what uh, Honorable, um, Honorable Ryder was emphasizing? I think he was re-emphasizing on the, the issues that we have raised today that they need to be captured. Did you capture that? Uh, Did you get that, uh, Honorable Mr. Jomo? Uh, yes, Chair, I've captured both the Mr. Ryder's input and Mr. Karim's input, uh, because oh, those, two, those two input are more or less the same, but it's just that each one of them is putting, is putting it differently. So I will try to consolidate this input and then send it to, to Mr. Karim as we normally do um, before the the report goes into 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 um, uh, yeah, the and Mr. Karim's input has new uh, additions, ne? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes, yes, I've captured all of that. So I will, I, will, I, will share with my, I will share with my colleagues. We will share with my colleagues and see if 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 colleagues as colleagues first we agree 
on what we have captured and then send it to Mr. Karim. Then Mr. Karim will give it, will send it back to us. And then you can take the report to the next level. Thank you, Chair. Chairperson, Thank you. May, may I suggest, Chairperson, sorry, that actually, yeah. you know, Pilalani and his team also are excellent. We are very lucky to have them. I don't know whether there's a need for it, uh, uh, but if you really want to, it's fine. But just to remember, I've been doing this sort of thing for 4,000 years now, and there's no need for me to do it, but okay, I'll do it the next time, and this, I mean this time, but there's no need, because Pilalani's uh, wording and your approval of it is, is really great. Uh, uh, you know, when he's given the drafts to you and me, uh, 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 you know, and we need to take what Dennis is saying. I don't think we're disagreeing with Dennis. Uh, 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 you know, I think Chairperson, you and I, and I think the committee as a whole is agreeing with Dennis. We're just saying that we need some qualifications to take account of sensitivities. Like, you know, there are staff here that work 25 hours a day. And, you know, they might see it, hopefully Wendy won't, and hopefully she's got a thick skin like us politicians. But I have the highest regard for Wendy and her team. I don't agree with them ideologically half the time. That's neither here nor there. They are treasured staff. We need to respect and value them, even if we disagree with them. That's the point. So I just put some qualifications to what Dennis said. Whether Dennis agrees with me or not, is neither here nor there, because he doesn't have 51% plus yet. So he can't ultimately shape wording. He can have a say. Thank you. That was said half facetiously, yeah. Dennis. I'm glad it was yet at the end of that sentence. Thank you. Yeah, Zenzele, uh, Honorable Karim and Honorable Raida. No, that was a Your big team. mistake, there, person. I withdraw it. You <laughs> erase it from the record. I, I tried to discourage you not hey, to tell. Take I'm a gonna, dialogue. Send the to me, please. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, honorable members. Uh, I think after the additions have been made, um, the, the minutes will be sent to, to your good selves uh, with the, those additions and the inputs that you have uh, raised. Thank you so much. Uh, we are now going to the adoption of the report. Can I get a mover? for the adoption of the report? Dennis. Chairperson. Dennis with this voice. Chairperson. Jadu. Can I get a Honorable Jadu, but there's someone who spoke first. I want to be sure. Honorable Yunus. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Dennis. <laughs> you want to throw Honorable Ryder <laughs> under the bus. OK, Honorable Karim is. Uh, is moving, Honorable Njadu, seconding. Thank you uh, so much, uh, Honorable Ryder. Thank you, Chair. Um, surprise, surprise. The Democratic Alliance would like to reserve its position at this point on the report until such time as we've had time to caucus. Thank you. Nothing surprising about that. Uh, since I came here, it has been like that. Honorable Deutsch. Thank you, Honorable Chair. The Freedom Front Plus also reserved our position on this report. You, oh, okay. Uh, Honorable and Tatem Letani. But that, yeah, I can't move on. Yeah. I can't I'm, differentiate I'm, 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 or Zandamela. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on deployment, uh, I'm struggling. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm, EFF reserve, it's, it's, it's. Okay. Uh, mm. Right. All right. Um, with that, honorable members, we are now getting to the last item. The minutes um, uh, have been sent. I think uh, they've been uh, sent after every meeting that we had since two weeks back or last week. So also today, a package of minutes have been sent to, uh, for us to be able to look into those uh, uh, minutes. The reason why I want, I want us to deal with these minutes, I don't want us uh, to go to 2021 and deal with minutes of 2020. It's just a few sets, uh, two, four, six, six sets of, of minutes, not so long. Can we get to the first set? Um, Estelle, can you flag the first set, the minutes of the 
7th of October. Can you help Lubabalo? Please collect the minutes. Thank you. The minutes of the 7th of October, page one is the list of attendees, page two. Go to page two, please. Anything members that you want to correct? Page three. Page four, honorable members that you want to amend or correct or add. And last page, it's page five. Can the members please uh, move for adoption? Can I get a mover for the adoption of the minutes of the 7th of October as a true reflection of the discussions? Chairperson? Can I get a Chairperson, can I make a mover? <coughs> Who? Chairperson? Jadu. Who's moving? Okay, yeah. Honorable Jadu, yeah. thank you. I'm, 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 I, the, the minutes are a true reflection and I'm moving for adoption. Thank you, Honorable Njadu. Attenda? Dennis will second. Thank you, Honorable uh, Ryder. The minutes of the 29th of October. First page, please. Uh, that's the list of the attendees. Let's go to the second page. Still a list of attendees and uh, third page. What page is this, uh, Lubabalo? Estelle? Um, hello, Jefferson. It's page four, chair. Page, oh, page, page four? Yes, page chair. four, thank you. Thank you. Page five. Page six. <clears throat> and page seven, that's the last page. Can I then get a mover for the adoption of the minutes of the 29th of October, 2020 <coughs> as a reflection of the discussion? I move, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Detroit moves. A seconder? I second, Chair. Thank you, I Honorable Mamarahani. Thank you, Honorable Mamarahani. Can you move to the next set of the minutes, the minutes of the 3rd of November, 2020? The first page, list of attendees, second page, page two. We are supposed to have nine pages here. It can't be two pages. What's happening? Which meeting is this? That, that November, Chair. This is the subcommittee meeting. This is the set Sorry. The subcommittee meeting. Sorry, Chair. It's Sorry. the wrong one. Sorry. Sorry. Um. But it's the same date, 3rd of October. My apologies, Chair. Understand. Thank you, members. First page. Second page, still attendees. 
third page, honorable members. Page number four. Page number five. Page number six. Page number seven. Move, move. Page number eight. And page number nine. Honorable members, can, can I get a mover for the minutes of the 3rd November 2020 as a true reflection of the discussion on the set date, can I get a mover? Third November. Dennis moves. Dennis moves. Thank you, Honorable Ryder. Moves. A seconder. Jadu second. Uh, Honorable Jadu seconds. The next uh, set of minutes is the eleventh. The minutes of the eleventh of November, twenty twenty. Eleventh of November, twenty twenty. Go to page number two, to three. You, so many people. To four, yes. Page five. Page six. Page seven. Page eight. Page eight. Are we on page eight? Okay, page nine. That's the last page of the minutes. Thank you. Uh, uh, you can, in the meantime, uh, reflect the minutes of the 12th of November. Honorable members, can I get a mover for the adoption of the minutes of the 11th of November 2020 as a true reflection of the discussions uh, in that meeting? Can I get a mover? Chairperson, can I move? My network oh, is very bad where, where I'm at. So I, I can't you. open the, yeah, but Thank I you. moved. Thank you. And, and I- Thank Chepe you, Honorable Mr. Mr. for moving a second. I second, Chepe Honorable Mamarehani. Thank you, Honorable Mamarehani. We now go to the last but one set of minutes, the 12th of November, 2020. Can you go to page two, uh, but, uh, Page one, you must uh, not just pass if there's something that you have seen in terms of the spelling of your names and state names. You have to indicate. Page uh, three. Oh, still on page one. Okay, let's move. Page four. Page five. Page six. And page seven, that's the last page. Scroll down. Can I get a mover for adoption of the minutes of the 12th of November as a true reflection of the discussions of the for meeting? Re for reflection, Chair, I, I propose adoption. 
I move chairperson. Uh, Honorable Njatu, you were first. You have um, <laughs> moved. Honorable Mamarehani seconds. The last set of the minutes, minutes of the 13th of November, 2020. The first page. Second page. Third page. Fourth page. Fifth page. There you go. Sixth page. Seventh page. Eighth page. Ninth page. And tenth page, which is the last page. Can I get a mover for adoption of the minutes of the 13th of November as a true reflection of the discussions, honorable members? Where's Ockham? My friend. I move, honorable chairperson. I am. Thank you, honorable Ockham. Honorable Ockham is moving. I move for adoption, chairperson. Uh, Honorable <laughs> Ocamp has moved to a seconding Honorable Mamara Khani. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Honorable Members. Honorable Members, I think you have. We have I moved first, but uh, you called. I will not be able to remove it. I know it's worse. Uh, honorable members, um, please leave me out. <laughs> I'm behaving. Don't worry. Uh, honorable uh, members, thank you very much for your contributions, uh, your dedication, and your hard work. Uh, let me take this opportunity again in this meeting to add to what members have reflected on the dedication, the hard work, and the support that we get from the support staff uh, um, in terms of the work that we are doing. We know that uh, if it weren't for you, honorable members, we, weren't, we were not going to be able to achieve what we are mandated to do. But before I close, I want um, I would like uh, uh, Mr. Nodata to give an announcement for the meetings. The next meeting, uh, Mr. Nodata. Thank you, Chairperson. The next meeting of the committee is a joint meeting with the Standing Committee on Appropriations. Uh, it's scheduled for this coming Friday at nine o'clock. Uh, it should be the public hearings on the second adjustments appropriation bill and uh, the 2020 MTBS chair. Um, we have got to have received about uh, nine submissions from stakeholders that would like to address the joint uh, meeting of, of, I mean, joint, joint committees. So we'll deal with that process on Friday. I think we'll, we'll be sent to members uh, latest by tomorrow afternoon. Thank you, Chair. And, and the documents. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Notada. Honorable members, thank you very much. Uh, we will meet um, tomorrow, two o'clock in the house uh, for the debate of DORA as we are going to present the report of this committee in as far as DORA is concerned, where uh, Honorable Ryder has prepared us. Thank you very much, and uh, uh, please uh, be safe and take care.
documents as soon as possible, please. Honorable Ryder, the, the, the staff has confirmed that the meetings will come uh, sooner as sooner than you expect them to, to come. Thank you very much, honorable members. Take care. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Chair. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, Chair. Thank you. Bye-bye, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, phone. <laughs> Thank you.